the new headlight module fixed my in-motion V11. Oh, feels so good to be back on the wheel. Yeah, let's go. <laughs> oh, yeah. Hang on a minute. So you know me, we've got to do a deep dive. What's up, everyone? I'm Jono, and in this video, it's our part two. I'll be just repairing the wheel in the garage. It's following on from part one where I talk about the problem, so check that out if you haven't seen it. I'll just be covering uh, repairing the wheel and I'll just be inspecting it for water ingress since I'll be pulling it apart. I'll also be trying to fix the squeak on the suspension since that's been a real problem for me. And then at the end I'll be talking about EUC reliability and the cost of running a wheel. Just my thoughts on that. Alright, see you guys. What's up everyone? Uh, the light's here already, if you can believe it. So we're going to be installing this one and it looks like uh, so the side cover needs to come off. So these screws, uh, which means we have to take the side saddle off, the seat, and then there'll be four bolts. Uh, see those bolt holes? So a couple bolts along there. And then unplug the wires. And then that should come out. Now the problem I'm seeing is that I've siliconed around uh, some of these seals to make it watertight. So breaking that silicone is going to be a bit tricky, but let's get stuck into it. Yeah, so this is what I was worried about with the silicone waterproofing as it makes uh, maintenance really hard. Uh, I think I've got the corner lifted here. Whoa. I've got this little screw up here because the tape was covering it. Here we are, I just got the cover off. Let's have a look now because I've done a shitload of uh, rain riding. So, you can see the silicone seal around. It's discolored uh, from the dust, but it looks really nice and dry in there. Now inside the battery. Looks perfect. And so these are the four screws on each side of the headlight unit. So pop them off and then we have the wires. Um, let's just have to fill it with those and should be good. There's no Loctite on these ones, but they didn't fall out. Giving it some taps just here, like smacking it up and it popped out. Uh, so these clips here, you have to pop them out from the pins right there. And then I, uh, you can see it's the wiring harness in here just has to be disconnected. And then we, uh, yeah, you can pop the new light in. Pull it out the top here. There we go. Yeah. So there's the old unit out. Now let's have a quick look on the inside. Uh, anything standing out? Not really. It's not like rusty or wet in particular. So we'd have to disassemble it further to know. Good morning. So let's pull this uh, old headlight apart. Let's see what's wrong with it. Also need to take off this and get the Velcro on the new light as well. Now check out these holes. This is for the ventilation, uh, to the heat sink for the light. So water can get in through here, which may be the issue. Now I've heard reports of water getting through the power button as well. That's why I put tape over mine. Yeah, that was from one drop. It's snapped there. But did it protect? The front bumper, yes it did, so it did its job. These could be quite a lot sturdier though, and maybe made out of something a bit more cushiony. But hopefully I can just reuse that. Oh, this is interesting, have a look at the power button. So I was worried that water would go straight through inside the housing, but on this side, it actually looks fairly well sealed. Let's just pull it apart a bit more to see what, what's happening there. Alright, so if water comes in, it can pull under the button 
and it could seep through these teeny screw holes, but they are teeny. So that's fairly water resistant, I'd say. I really struggling to try and pull the light out. And I found uh, these hidden screws underneath the InMotion emblem. So after popping these out, check it out. Just slides out like that. Bam. So this is the heat sink that is cooled by those open vents. So if water comes in, it's going to come through here onto the back of the light, which really shouldn't be much of a problem. So having a look at the light a bit closer, there is some signs of like salt build up or just a little bit of like crystallization because you know I live on the coast. So there's a tiny bit of rust on that screw, but absolutely nothing significant. It'd be handy to keep this as a spare headlight in case something happens uh, to my other one. Or I might give it to the shop so that they can help someone else out in case they need a spare part. The main thing I was considering was uh, there's a circuit board up the top there. And that isn't actually going to get wet if water goes through these air vents. So I do want to get that circuit board out and see if there's anything fried or visible issues. We've got those two screws out and now the top oh, just separates like that. So check it out, this uh, circuit board is sort of clamped in there by this front grill, which is just floating. Uh, it's got black silicone in the corners. So it looks like it just slides out this way. Oh, there it is. Oh, there's the circuit board out. Alrighty, so that's the display and power button. I'm just having a look to see if anything is burnt or corroded or obviously wrong. You tell me, I can't see anything up with that. But surely that's where the issue lies. So the old wiring harness is embedded with the rubber gasket. Then um, the new light has its own rubber gasket and wiring harness. So what I'm planning to do is to disconnect these and then just reuse the old existing one. Just plug and play. Make sure they click together. And hard to know if anything's pinching. Let's just check all the wires are out of the way, G. There we go, that's seated in. So it shouldn't have been that tight. There were some cables up in here that need to be tucked away uh, before it slid in smoothly. So just watch out for that. All right, uh, I've got the harness wired in. I haven't put the wheel back together, but now's the time to test it to make sure that it's working. Oh. Hello. Yeah. It's working. <laughs> All right. Let's get this wheel put back together. All right, before I get much further, I realized I should check the app and make sure it's connecting and the diagnostics are good. So it actually might have a new Bluetooth module which means I'll have to resync it. That's good. Oh, it's still got my total mileage, so that's a bonus. All right, let's hit up the diagnostics. Excellent. Oh, isn't it great when things just work out? Alrighty, it's looking good. We got the light in. Uh, I've got Loctite on the bolts here. Uh, I've got the suspension back in and it's all cleaned and got the lubricant on it. Uh, now just going to be cleaning this up. Look, it's not too bit of dust. Uh, cleaning up the silicone and then reapplying some fresh silicone on there. 
get the side panels back on and you're ready to run. Just notice on the wire, uh, the motor power wire here, it's a little bit frayed, so I'll just be hitting that with a little extra silicone. Just wanted to point out, there's a split here and here on the screw holes. So with these plastic components, what can you expect? And uh, I'm about to silicone it up. So the most important area I've found is right here where the mudguard ends. So it's lots of dirt and uh, just crud just builds up right here. So that's the main area to silicone up. And then I'll probably leave a section down here not just in case anything gets in there, we'll have a uh, path to run out down the bottom. And while I'm at it, I'm gonna lubricate the sliders. So let's get started on that Quite wet in there. Did you see that? Look at those striations. That might be where the squeak is coming from. Is it straight? This looks pretty straight to me. So this is the left side piston, and you can see it's much the same uh, up on the lower part of the treble here. It's quite all scoured up. So that's a point of issue. That's where I want to lubricate. So I'm just feeling these grooves and they don't feel too rough or anything so I'm not going to bother sanding them down. But I'm going to hit it with uh, dry PTFE lubricant on the sliders. Probably don't want to use a grease because that would collect dust and then uh, damage it further. Perfect opportunity to show the slider play that I was talking about in my last video. Bonus ending video. So I had to let the pressure out of the suspension and they're just real shit now because we need to do it a few times. Yeah, I find I need to pump it a few times when it's been emptied. So I've got real dodgy suspension on this ride. Got to take it easy. Alright, later. Um, back in the garage after the ride to check just how far off these suspension pressures are. So when I flick the switch it should be around 110. So that's actually pretty good, 107 on the left lower chamber. So I think what's happened is that because I've lubricated the sliders I'm getting a much deeper sag. So check this out, even without my riding gear, hop off and expand the calipers. So let's go for 120 and test the sag at that. So I can already tell this is feeling more like normal at the 120. Good, I'm going to leave it at that 120 psi, it's giving me 18.5 and that's without my riding gear. So once I get my riding gear on that should put me up around the low 20s which is what I want. So honestly the timing is a bit embarrassed you know, given my last uh, 4,000 kilometer review video. But, you know, up to that point, I hadn't had any issues with the wheel. And as soon as I do, you know, I'm not gonna hide them. I'm just gonna tell you guys what's happened. These are relatively basic machines, but they still have issues and require maintenance. So what was the cost to me for these repairs? Well, the Uber home was uh, 38 bucks. And then I was four days without a wheel, but I had the e-scooter and I'm on the same path here. And uh, I'll tell you, I'm having a lot more fun <laughs> on the EUC. Uh, so it was a warranty job. Uh, so zero cost for the part. And then, yeah, just installing it was about three hours. But, you know, it's doing other things, filming, etc. So it's taken a lot longer than if you're just doing the light replacement yourself. Now. I do like working on the wheel, but if you don't, I'm sure your local shop, 
should have a workshop and would do it for you. So what about the reliability of this thing? It just broke down, I should be pissed off, right? Well, it's actually amazing, because uh, I'm comparing it to my e-scooter. I've done double the kilometers on this EUC than the e-scooter, and this is the only time I've been broken down. Now let's compare the e-scooter. I've had about five or six flat tires, and uh, the throttle broke, so that was a warranty job. The controller broke, and the rear motor, so that was a warranty job, but they charged me 200 bucks for that. And then I've spent, you know, tons of time just fiddling with the e-scooter, you know, adjusting brakes and uh, tightening things. The kickstand fell off, so all sorts of rubbish like that. G'day. <laughs> so what about the squeak and the tire, uh, the suspension? And I thought it was fixed at first, uh, riding around the patio at home, but listen to this. So what do you reckon? I did grease the suspension sliders. Uh, previously I pulled the foot plates apart and you know, lubricated that, so that didn't fix it either. So I just don't know where that squeak is coming from. A bonus thing in this whole endeavor is that the wheel is easy to turn on now, which is so good. Because, you know, in my review video, I was having problems I was having problems turning the wheel on, saying how finicky it was. But now it's a breeze. All right, awesome guys. Ride safe and I'll see you in the next one. <laughs> so Teddy finally got the ride that he was promised. Say hello to all the nice people. Yeah, buddy. <laughs>